all of the tips and tricks that YouTube creators will give you in the world are not going to make up for poor content. Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering your YouTube creator questions. I'm going to share exactly how much I'm making right now on YouTube, what my day is like. We're going to talk about everything from how to set boundaries to what I use to film and all kinds of things in between and I'm really glad that you're here. I left my career uh, going on five years now. Uh, at the time not knowing exactly what I was going to do, started documenting it here on YouTube, fully in intending to go back to a regular job and instead this has become my career. I knew nothing when I started. I didn't know how to edit. I did have a background in acting. I had a background in public speaking, but I really did not know what I was doing. So I'm very passionate about helping people that are just starting out, especially if you're starting out over 40, because this can feel like a kid's game. And I didn't even start my YouTube channel until I was 48. So hopefully that encourages you today. The first thing I wanna get into today though, are my current numbers. These are updates that I like to do from time to time. You guys really seem to enjoy it. So I'm, I'm gonna share my actual YouTube earnings and I will put it on a little screen here so that you can see it. And um, I will go to my uh, travel vlog channel first and I'm going to click on revenue and I'm going to click on my revenue so far for 2023. And this is the first time I'm looking at this number too. And wow, okay. So far in 2023, so as I'm filming this, we're at almost the end of July, on Jen LaForge, which is my travel channel, I have made $7,645. So let's screenshot that so that we have it to put up and show you guys. And then I'm going to switch over to my other account, which is my lifestyle channel, which is called, uh, well, it's the one that you're on. So you know what it's called because you're here and you can see it. Um, and we're gonna click on revenue and we're gonna click on 2023. And on that channel, I have made $8,058.87 so far this year. And I'm gonna screenshot that so I can show you. Now I produce anywhere from two to three videos per month. And the videos will range from some videos I make hardly anything to other videos will get picked up by the algorithm. Um, one of my videos right now that has gone up fairly recently has like 90,000 views. Another one I put up this year has like 150,000 views. And then a lot of other ones don't get as many views or, and this is important, they may not be as attractive to advertisers as other videos because that really depends on what the topic is as to how much I get paid. So it's views, but it's really views and also is it a video that is attractive to advertisers because that really drives up that revenue. I have um, almost 33,000 subscribers on my travel channel. I have about 32.5 on my lifestyle channel and I'm growing at a rate of between 1,000 and 2,000 subscribers per month. And I hope that you just joined us if you haven't subscribed already. I work in a lot of different ways. So the numbers that I'm sharing today are only my YouTube AdSense numbers. So every month I get an actual check from AdSense, which is Google, well, it's direct deposited, but which is the combined total of both channels. I also make money through affiliate marketing and that ranges anywhere from $300 to $1,000 a month, just depending on the month. I do have Patreon, which I would love to have you join us over there. It's patreon.com slash Jen LaForge. That is actually how I provide for the support of the business, the running of the day-to-day -day operations, all of those kinds of things that comes from my Patreon account. And then I also do YouTube consulting and I have a few little ways that I make money here and there. Overall, we are on track this year to make six figures with the business in total. I am very, very proud of that, especially because as a female entrepreneur, I have built this business completely on my own. I have an LLC that's called Vesta Productions. It is named after my great grandmother. And it, it's just um, been such a labor of love for me. So I wanna get into your questions, but I wanted to start off with that. You need to know if you wanna be a YouTube creator that you absolutely can turn this into a career, but it requires a level of dedication, hard work, 
You do need to have some natural ability and talent, a topic that you love talking about. We're going to get more into that a little bit later in the vlog. And um, yeah, it is it is a privilege that this is what I get to do with my life. I have never been so fulfilled by work that I've done, and I love every single minute of it. Okay, let's get straight into your questions. Okay, so I'm, I'm really comfortable today because today is an editing day, and this is a really good question to answer when I'm in this kind of work from home attire. Hi, Jen, this is awesome. Could you go over your schedule routine a little bit in terms of how you balance everything that goes into being a creator? Thanks, Deb. So the first thing I would say is uh, when you first start out and it's just you, you have to be so incredibly disciplined. And I was really grateful for my 25 years of work experience because I did know a little bit about how I work best, what times of day I do my best work in different arenas, when am I most creative, when is it better for me to do more bookkeeping work. I'm a huge fan of that and I am super diligent about my planner. I'm currently in Plum Paper and I use a combination of my Plum Paper planner and also iCal. My husband and I both use that so that we can compare schedules. And that's super important because having um, time off together is such a high value to me. So the first thing I do before I start my week is I schedule out our playtime. I think that is such a priority. We've been married, it will be 34 years. Is that right? Yeah, 34 years in February. And we have to invest in our marriage. I have to invest in my own personal development. And in the beginning, I was not so great at taking time off. So that always goes on the schedule first. Then I have to look at the week ahead. Um, I try to schedule things um, on like a full day of the week. That's just how I work better. So for instance, I will take a whole day and do nothing but filming. Then I will have a whole day that is nothing but editing, uploading, um, you know, creating posts for social media. Then I'll have a whole day that is just meeting with clients. I'm very lucky that I have that kind of control over my schedule so that I can do that. But I like starting the day, and I've always been this way, even when I had more traditional jobs, knowing, okay, today is going to be all about bookkeeping, bookkeeping and taxes and numbers, and I can kind of get in that frame of mind. I don't know, maybe it's my acting background, but I'm like, today I'm going to pretend like I'm someone that's good with details and numbers. And I can dress for that, and I can show up ready to do whatever is required of me that day. Um, and then in another day, if I know I'm filming, I always try to film more than one video at a time, because if I'm going to do full hair and makeup, I want to get more than one video out of it. So I know not to schedule anything else that day. No client calls. Oh, I'm moving my jeans around. Sorry. Um, don't schedule any client calls. Don't schedule anything that's going to you know detract me from getting ready and filming a video. If you've ever done it, filming a YouTube video is incredibly time intensive. Um, unless you are in a situation where you have a full studio that is set up all the time, and that is something that in our next house I might want to develop. But I have to set up my lighting, my backdrop, everything has to be just so. And there's usually a lot of retakes. Um, sometimes I nail it on the first time. That's not very often. For example, I'm sitting on the floor of my closet filming this, and I've had to record it five times. So <laughs> that's actually really normal. Um, so yeah, it's good to devote a whole day to that. Um, also, it is my team that enables me to get everything done. Um, we are at the point now with this being you know, a six-figure business, uh, multiple moving parts. We're starting to work with you know, brands and doing campaigns. I've got my consulting clients still, the tax piece of things. I'm so grateful for Annalise, who works for me just a few hours a week as a virtual assistant, my bookkeeper, my tax accountant, my attorney, <laughs> like there are a lot of different people that make this possible. And um, I could not do it without them. There are too many moving parts. So I think when I used to watch YouTube, I thought, well, it looks so easy because you just show up. And it is kind of that way in the beginning. Um, but you just, there's, there's a lot to it. And I have to stay super disciplined with my schedule. So like a normal day, there really isn't a normal day. Um, and then when I'm traveling, all that goes out the window. Uh, some YouTube creators that do travel vlogs, 
will try to work while they're traveling. I have tried that over the years. I'm not good at it. What happens is I'm not good at the work and I'm not good at the traveling. So I do much better if while I'm on the road, I'm just focused on capturing really good memories. And then I worry about work stuff when I get back. So um, obviously that makes when I'm doing the work stuff even more important because I'm usually pretty behind when I get back from a trip and I have a lot to do. So um, the good news is there's always something to do. Uh, and I try not to force it. Like if I have bookkeeping scheduled all day and my brain just cannot get there, then I will try to reschedule it for another day. That is the blessing and the curse of being your own boss is you get to decide, but you also have to be in incredibly disciplined because otherwise the work will never get done and there is a lot of work. Okay, this next question I thought was so interesting and it's something I've actually never been asked before and this is from Trish. How do you determine the boundaries for what you talk about and who you reveal on the vlog? Now, uh, years ago, I read this. I think it was in some article I was reading when I was first starting my blog, but the advice was share 100% of 10% of your life. I think that the really successful bloggers, YouTube creators, Instagrammers, they do share a lot. And there's, there's a lot of value in making the viewer feel that you're bringing them into their inner circle. That's what I appreciate when I'm watching YouTube content, when I'm on Instagram, when I'm on threads or whatever the case may be. But you have to maintain that sense of privacy, not only for yourself, but also for your family. So my children, um, are all grown and they do not want to be on my channel or really mentioned in any way, shape or form. Occasionally they will let me post pictures and I'm great with that, but by and large, they are not part of my channel. They did not choose to have a YouTube channel. This is my YouTube channel. And so I really respect their boundaries in that regard. We have a big family trip to Walt Disney World coming up in January that you will see nothing of. I might be able to get them to, um, well, I, I will film like a room tour and some things like that, but there will be no vlogging going on because they're just not interested in that. And I'm gonna honor that. The same goes for uh, employees at different places like cast members. I just got off of the Disney Dream. Uh, some of the servers that have become friends of mine, I always ask, are you okay if I film you? And, and they have said no. And if someone says no, there's no more conversation about it. When it comes to friends of mine that I travel with, if um, they ever said, I'm not comfortable being filmed or I don't wanna be filmed, I'm never gonna force somebody to be part of my work. That just doesn't make any sense. So I always honor other people's boundaries, but then I think even more importantly as a content creator, I value my own boundaries. I have a private life. I have things about my life that I will never talk about publicly, things about my marriage, things about my family of origin, of any, you name it, any variety of things. And I think in order to be successful at this, you have to be able to keep a private life private and never apologize for that. Uh, being a content creator doesn't mean that everybody has access to every area of your life. And I would never feel that way about content creators that I watch. And so, um, you know, I, I, I show what I choose to show. Just like I have autonomy over my own body, I have, uh, I have autonomy over what I share. I have autonomy over my private life. I get to decide and I set those boundaries. Um, now in terms of like people in public and things like that, um, there was another question um, that came from someone who's been viewing the channel for a long time about being conscientious about not filming strangers. Now some of it cannot be helped, but I do try very hard to just, if people are in the background to not be focusing on any one person. Um, it is inevitable, but I try to, number one, not show anybody to, you know, Know, so you can see them too clearly. And then number two, uh, to really not intrude on other people's vacations or other people's um, personal life. I don't get to do that. Um, I don't get to intrude on someone's vacation by say, you know, obnoxiously talking um, during a ride at Disney World or um, filming someone else trying to enjoy a meal. Uh, I would not appreciate that. And so I try to treat others as I would like to be treated. And so far, I think I've done a pretty good job. I won't say always because um, I just do the best that I can do. And when you're in public spaces, that's part of it. But um, yeah, I think it's just being a good human being.
respecting other people's boundaries and respecting your own boundaries and your own right to privacy. Okay, this next question is from Five Hungry Travelers. And uh, she's asking, I know you had a blog and I'm wondering how much the blog and the YouTube channels feed each other in terms of SEO. Does trying to grow on YouTube require posting in other socials and blogs, et cetera? So yes, I did have a huge advantage when I started my YouTube channel in that I had been blogging since I think I started blogging in 2009, maybe 2008, and I did have a following there. It was not a huge following, but it was enough to kind of jumpstart me when I started my YouTube channel. If you have anything available to you, maybe you have an Instagram account with a lot of faithful followers, maybe it's a Facebook account, maybe it's a blog, maybe it's TikTok, any other social media platform where you are already gaining followers, you have followers, definitely that's going to help you when starting a YouTube channel. Having said that, someone else had asked a question, and I'll kind of combine these two, about how long did it take you to get to a thousand subscribers and to become monetized? And it took me just about a year to achieve both of those goals. But, you know, Steve Martin was asked, and I just saw this interview a little while ago, and I don't know why whatever algorithm in whatever place served this up to me, but I loved it. And he said, actors always ask him, what is your best advice for aspiring actors? And his answer was so simple. He said, be so good that they cannot ignore you. So all of the SEO advice in the world, all of the other social media platforms in the world, all of the tips and tricks that YouTube creators will give you in the world are not going to make up for poor content. So the number one thing is making sure that you are honing your craft, that you know how to present yourself in front of the camera, that you are taking the time necessary to create great videos, and that you're talking about something that people actually want to know about. Because, you know, they're not gonna fall in love with you in, to the point where they wanna just watch like a day in the life vlog if they don't first follow you for some other reason. For me, kind of the entree into my growth on YouTube was twofold, Run Disney and Disney Vacation Club. Those were the two things that I was known for, that I had the most experience in. That's what I first started talking about. So a whole bunch of people found my videos because they were Googling and looking for content on those two topics. And then over time, some of them really enjoyed what I had to say and they stuck around. And I was able to make more and more videos and produce more and more content and get to the point where I am today. But we're going on, it's been five and a half years now. It has been countless hours. Um, I always like to say, probably my first two to three years on YouTube, my hourly pay, I would have made much more working at Target or working as I had um, at the container store. There were many other things I could have done that made a lot more money than that. It's really only been in the last probably 18 months or so that things have really become not just financially sustainable, but the business has really grown. And that's when I've been able to start hiring and doing all those kinds of things that is sort of like, this big vision I had for myself. It's what my husband calls Jen's empire. <laughs> I don't know if I love that, but it is turning into something far bigger than I could ever have imagined. But you have to start by talking about something in an interesting way that people are interested in knowing about because without those two things, none of the other growth is possible. Now, getting back to blogging, I think a blog can be a fantastic place to start if you don't think you're quite ready for your YouTube channel yet. If nothing else, it gives you a landing page, it gives you a website, most of the affiliate marketing, even Amazon and things like that, they want you to have a physical website. So a blog is a great free way to do that. Um, as you grow, there's tips and tricks to protect your blog, to protect all of those things. But if you're just starting out, I would say get a domain name, start a blog, start there in print form, and start kind of gathering interest to see what it is that you're passionate about that also people are looking for. Because you have to be fascinated with your own topic if you want this to be a sustainable thing for you over the long haul. So yeah, I definitely think other social media platforms play into it, but don't become spread so thin that you're like trying to have a presence on TikTok and threads and Instagram and whatever Twitter is called now, I, I can't keep track, and YouTube and this and that. 
pick, I would say, no more than two to three where you're good, where you feel like people uh, that are like you are, like where is your audience? I was just working with one of my clients, which by the way, I do very limited YouTube consulting now, but if you're interested in that, I will put a link down in the description box. You're welcome to um, you know, hit me up. I generally don't work with people that don't already have a YouTube channel, um, so just keep that in mind before reaching out. But um, we were looking at her statistics and the vast majority of people that were finding her channel were coming from Facebook. And the thing is, she doesn't even have that big of a presence on Facebook, but somewhere there's a Facebook group that clearly is talking about her. So that was her encouragement to start posting more on Facebook, to start growing that audience. Don't go chasing people where they aren't already. Go where your people already are and that will make you work smarter not harder. Uh, let's talk about editing. I get asked about this maybe more than anything else other than equipment, and I'm going to get into that during this segment as well. But for editing, I use exclusively iMovie. I have tried almost all of them at this point, and I consistently go back to iMovie for ease of use. It is compatible with everything that I use. I'm a MacBook girl and an iPhone girl, and it's just been easy for me, and it's what I know. Having said that, it took me a long time to become proficient with iMovie. So you really just need to practice. I never took a class or anything like that. I watched YouTube videos and I really just taught myself. So if this is something you're thinking about doing, I would just shoot tons of practice footage. Go out and film yourself talking to yourself. Film you know, your own town. Film yourself walking your dogs. And then go home and edit the videos and just keep practicing. It used to take me five to six hours to edit a very simple video and I will still spend five to six hours but that's more for like a travel vlog something super involved where I'm interspersing music and all of that kind of thing um, but yeah iMovie is all I use now for my equipment I film exclusively on an iPhone 14 the regular one and an i iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, it's a little overkill that I have two phones, but when I travel, I like to have one for backup. And I will also use it for, um, you know, if I want to do a time lapse or something like that. Sometimes I want to get different angles, or maybe I want to talk, but I also want to be filming what I'm looking at. Then I will use both phones. I have a Joby. Is that how it's pronounced? I think it's Joby, maybe Gobi. Um, uh, what do you call it? Tripod? I'm such a professional. Uh, tripod that I use. I have a iPhone holder that goes on top of that uh, Joby or whatever it's pronounced, tripod. And then I have a microphone that I'm coming to you on right now. It is by, it says right on there. <laughs> Hollyland. It is not expensive. I have had very expensive mics down to very cheap mics. This one is kind of in the middle and I have been loving it. It is just so convenient. It's always charged and ready to go. It actually comes with two receivers. I have the model that is for a lightning cables or lightning adapter for my iPhones. So that's the one I will link, but be careful because I know that the next model of iPhones are going to be USB-C and not lightning. So if you're going to invest, you may want to invest in one with an adapter instead of going straight with the lightning. And that will make sense once you get on the site that you can find down in the description box. Now, as far as like lighting and things like that, predominantly I just like to film like I am right now pointed toward a window. When you're in your 40s, and 50s and beyond, light is your friend, but really light is your friend no matter who you are. People want to be able to see you and they want to be able to hear you. I always say worry far less about like hair and makeup. I think that that can become something, especially for women, that really keeps us from producing videos because we get bogged down in that and we feel like we have to look perfect. Unless your channel is about beauty, in which case, okay, go crazy. But if your channel is about basically anything else, People just care that you're a good communicator and they care far less that, you know, your makeup is perfect. And for most of us, we have this sort of range of, you know, our worst day to our best day. We see a huge difference. The rest of the world really doesn't. So if you're a good communicator, definitely don't worry so much about the hair and makeup being perfect all the time because it's just never going to be. And if you wait to be perfect to produce a YouTube video, 
it is never going to happen. So that's all the equipment that I use. Um, everyone always asks me, you know, how did you learn? How did you become proficient? First of all, as far as editing goes, I'm still not as good as I want to be. In a perfect world, I would go to film school because I love it. And being a storyteller is hard work. Uh, I had had a question from Lisa how do you know when you're editing a travel vlog what to leave in and what to take out? And it is so, um, I, I can't even really put my finger on it. I just know it when I see it. And it's the act of storytelling for me. And I know some of you are like, well, it doesn't really seem like you're that, you know, it just looks like a regular travel vlog. I pour my heart and soul into every one of those travel vlogs. And there is a lot that does not make it into the vlogs because I don't feel like it matches up with the story that I want to tell. So I won't know that until I get home and look at the footage, but it is not, I just said earlier that I'm a lot more proficient with editing now. That is true of like talking head videos and really straightforward things. But if I'm doing true storytelling, like I did with the Japan vlogs, like I'm doing with these Greece vlogs, it can take me days. And I do like a rough edit and then I finesse it and I'm bringing in different music. And then it's like, oh, I don't really like that music. Oh, that music, oh, and that was a little too Greek. I, I wanna do Greek music here, then I wanna do jazz here. By the way, I do use a resource called Epidemic Sound for all of my music. I love their library and I love the search features on there. So I'll put my affiliate link down in the description box so that you can head over there if you're interested. Um, they have very reasonable plans. They are a Canadian company, so I always wanna tell people that. Make sure you use a card that doesn't charge an international transaction fee because if you're in the US, they're in Canada, you're gonna have to pay more if you have to pay that international transaction fee. So. Anyway, that's just a side note I always forget to talk about. But it's something that I'm really, really passionate about, especially in terms of if you wanna become a travel vlogger. I don't think you can do that well if you don't have a passion for storytelling and the creative piece of things. It, they just won't, in my view, they just won't be interesting to watch. So uh, definitely think about that. Is that something that you're passionate about and that you will find enjoyment in spending hours and hours and hours on because I, my kids call it, I get into the zone and I, I don't even notice that anything else is going on or the passage of time um, or the flow or whatever you wanna call it. But when I am editing and I'm trying to tell a good story, I am probably the most content that I am doing anything else in my life. So, you know, take that for what it is. And that's it. So thank you so much for joining me for the questions. Thank you to those of you that submitted questions. If you are dreaming of becoming a YouTube creator or you were just curious about the behind the scenes, I'm really glad that you were here. And I hope whatever you're doing, you're finding joy. And I'll see you next time. Bye. As always, this video and all my videos brought to you by my amazing patrons. If you want to have access to exclusive content, monthly live streams, discounts on consulting and other perks, please come and join us at patreon.com slash Jen LaForge. And to all of my patrons, a huge thank you. I could not do this without you.